My first career before coming to Rutgers was in the diplomatic service as a cultural attaché in Argentina and in Spain. My latest book is a, a memoir of the four years that I was in Spain. In some cases strange, in some cases crazy, uh, funny, uh, and sometimes very significant events that took place during those four years. For example, one of the chapters is called a day with Martin Luther King in Madrid. I was in my 20s and uh, uh, the ambassador had assigned me to look after Martin Luther King who was coming to Madrid for just one day. Uh, we got this news at the very last uh, minute and the ambassador assigned me even though I was the youngest and most junior guy at the embassy because he knew I had written my MA thesis on the Montgomery bus boycott that br first brought Martin to world attention. And so this was, you know, the kind of thrilling thing. Uh, we just hung out. I mean, I, uh, we were together all day, um, and uh, a lot of amusing things happened. I mean, we think of King, uh, uh, obviously, as a great American, uh, as, as an icon. Uh, that huge statue we now have him in. We have of him in Washington. I know him as a cuddly guy that we're hanging out and on a first name basis and we're just talking and uh, about our lives, his life, my life. Uh, um, it was really a pretty thrilling thing. Um, and, and then there were chapters like that all through the book. One other I might mention right off is the famous or infamous Palomares stories. Palomares was a little town in, in the province of Almeria in the south of Spain, a B-52 bomber, U.S. bomber, uh, collided with a KC-135 tanker that was refueling it, and it all exploded in the sky, and most of the airmen were killed, American airmen were killed, some came down alive, but the four hydrogen bombs on that plane came down, three of them landing on this little town of Palomares, and one just off uh, the town in the Mediterranean Sea. Luckily, they weren't armed. If they, if they had been armed, that, that would have been the end of Europe. Uh, uh, so this was the biggest story in the world um, for some months. There was radiation, not from a nuclear explosion, but because two of the bombs cracked open when they hit the ground and the plutonium came out. Uh, and then so that was a big story, but the second big story was we couldn't find the fourth bomb. It was out in the middle of the Mediterranean, and a Spanish fisherman kept saying, well, I know where it is, it came down right by my boat. And they wouldn't listen to him for several months, and then finally they, they did, and sure enough, there it was, exactly where he said it was, but at a very great depth, and there was a great danger of how you could get this thing up, and then it, the cable broke, and it had to do it again. So I was involved in that story. Uh, the embassy wasn't doing anything else but being involved uh, in that story. It's the difference between what we call primary sources and secondary sources. I'm not an historian. This, this is written in the first person. I'm just telling what happened to me. Historians may quote from this, I mean, here's this guy, you know, uh, uh, who presents a Martin Luther King that nobody's ever presented before. A memoir is what you choose to remember. I've told so many of these stories over the years and to friends so often, and to my wife, to my kids, that, you know, a story evolves <laughs> over time. Uh, and you've got to be very careful with that because... Uh, uh, you, you learn as you tell a story orally what works. That's when the danger part comes in because you, that's when you might tend to exaggerate or you might uh, tend to focus on a, a, a minor part of it, but it's important to you because it's funny or it's profound, but it isn't, it isn't um, l legally, let's say, or, or officially the most important part of the story is just the most important part to you. Uh, so in a sense, a memoir is, is autobiography, is really what it is. It's, you, it's how you choose to see yourself and how you choose to tell 
a story. 